God prepared a place for humanity so that we could carry out our call, carry out our destinies, live intentionally with Him. Hi, I'm Megan Marcelino, and I want to welcome you back to Generations at the Table. Thank you so much for pulling up a chair and joining me today. I want to jump right in and talk to you about having prepared hearts. I truly believe that having a prepared heart is, is a key to living in God's blessings, which is something that we all seek, right? We seek a lifestyle that is blessed by God, blessed with God's favor, blessed with, with abundance and direction and identity and purpose. And so much of that is linked to having a, a, a heart that is prepared, an altar in ourselves, right? We are the temple of the Holy Spirit that is prepared. I was listening to a post that was shared by uh, Brooke Ligerwood, and she was talking about basically the gift of preparation and that how preparation is painful, but preparation is what enables basically God comes to prepared places. He comes to altars that we prepare. He comes to hearts that are prepared. And what really struck me about that was our emphasis as a ministry and as a family on the one new man culture and one new humanity culture and bringing that to our tables, to our families, to our churches. And the whole emphasis of that is embracing a culture of preparation. I mean, you see preparation throughout the scripture, and I want to talk to you about that today, but especially when you're dealing with the whole concept of a one new man culture in your home and the feast of the Lord, all of it is about preparing our hearts to come to a place of an encounter, preparing the altars within us to basically be basically be able to receive what God has for us and be able to carry what God has for us and be able to move in what God has for us. And that comes from a place of preparation. And preparation is birthed out of discipline and obedience. I was thinking about how sometimes I show up for something unprepared. Um, or, or maybe it's like, okay, you're hosting company and things are running behind and they show up at your door and things feel frazzled and the, the food's not ready, the kids aren't dressed, the house isn't clean, and it just creates like this atmosphere for me and my personality of anxiety. So I do so much better if I can prepare ahead of time. And sometimes that looks like I create a note on my phone with a list of things that need to be done and I share that note with Paul and that way it's like okay before everybody gets here on Sunday here are some things that need to be accomplished and it can be really detailed sometimes and sometimes it's not so much but it's literally like hey here's what we're eating here's what we're drinking don't forget to light the candles don't forget to pick up the room don't and if something about getting it out of your head and on paper helps me feel prepared but what's the point of that it's so that when our guests arrive that there is an atmosphere of joy and peace and I am not anxious and irritable and that I can be a good and present host and I can enjoy the reason why you opened the doors to your home to begin with. But that lack of preparation when I am running behind, maybe even with good excuses, but not, still not prepared, it really, it just like, I feel like it puts a damper on the entire event and I'm not able to enjoy it. So it's like, why did I do this? So let's, put that into a perspective of our spiritual lives, when we are prepared, and we're gonna talk about what that looks like, we are able to be a host for the Holy Spirit. We are able to carry his glory into situations. We are able to bring transformation because we are operating from a place of peace and spiritual preparedness. So think about um, the last Passover. Some of the last things that Jesus demonstrated and said to us had to do with preparation. So in Mark 14, 12 through 15, he said this, and this is, they're getting ready to go have their last supper together, the last Passover. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, said to Jesus, where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? And he sent out two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man you will meet carrying a water of pitcher, follow him. Wherever he goes in, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. Furnished and prepared. See, God wants to furnish and prepare your spiritual life to host that next move of God, to host that gathering. I mean, if you think about who was this man, how did he know to be 
have a room furnished and prepared. Like, I don't know the backstory on this, but I feel like he had built a space and allowed room in his life and his heart to be prepared to host the King of Kings and his disciples. And he was ready. He had built the place. He had built the space. And so sometimes God is going to send us on assignments in the natural where you are literally building and preparing the space ahead of time to host a move of God, to host something that is going to transform nations that we are going to be talking about for generations. And other times it's within you. He is going to begin dealing with things on the inside of you to clean out, to prepare, to furnish and to prepare your space so that you can host what God has given you, your calling, your destiny, your identity, your purpose. You have to make room for those things. You know, there's all of these stories about people who are hoarders and you've got like, basically they have no room for anything else. They don't have room for what matters because they hold on to all of these negative and dirty things. Well, we have to take that approach in our life, our physical life and our spiritual life of getting rid of and purging so that we can make room for the good that God has for us. I was thinking about the example of Mary and Gabriel. And so Luke 1 26, through um, 38, it tells the whole story. But I really like verse 30 when it says to Mary, the angel says, do not yield to your fear, Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen to surprise you with a wonderful gift. So Mary was prepared. There was a reason she was able to receive the angel, but then the Lord came to her through Gabriel with a prophetic instruction of here is what to come, and here is how to prepare yourself for what you are about to receive. And this is the prophetic word, and as we all know, sometimes when we receive those, it doesn't look exactly like we thought it was, and it doesn't always manifest exactly like we thought it would be. But Rabbi Kurt, my dad, always reminds me that prophetic words are opportunities. They are opportunities to be carried out. Gabriel came to Mary and said, this is what God has for you. Will you accept it? Will you walk it out? Will you take this step by step? Here's how he's preparing your heart now. What are the next steps for you? Mary could have said no. Actually, in one of the next podcasts, I want to talk to you about the power of our no and the and the, the basically the trickle-down impact that that could have. But Mary said yes and changed the course in the face of humanity forever. The feasts are totally and completely times of preparation. I mean, there's, there's many feasts, but if we highlight just Passover and Shavuot and Tabernacles, Passover prepares us for a season of deliverance. Shavuot prepares us for instruction and the identity and the birthing of our spiritual DNA. And Tabernacles prepares us to walk in a covenant relationship with God, to walk in that marriage place with Him. And, and the Lord takes us through those cycles because He knows as humanity that we need that consistent renewal. I think when you look at the calendar of the Lord, what is so amazing is, is that He takes us through and you understand the Hebrew months, you will begin to see that there's a true seasonality to God and He is taking us through, but each season prepares us for what He has for us. But are your eyes upon them? Is your heart aware of them? Have you taken the time to study and to know what to expect? I've been, uh, this year I've been writing blogs on the Hebrew months of the year, and I have to tell you, it has been revelatory, but sometimes even I forget. Uh, just this morning, my husband sent me a screenshot of something that I had said about this month um, in the blog, like what to expect. And he said, hey, this is where we're at. Like, we, we, this is what we've been walking through. And we had had just a really hard conversation last night about some areas I was struggling in, and I had completely forgotten. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, here we are. The, there is light at the end of the tunnel. The, there is hope. And just remember the season that we're in. At the very end of Jesus' life, he goes to tell us that he has come to prepare a place. He is going to prepare a place for us, that he is preparing to receive us unto himself. So even at the very end of one of the final things he says to us is, I go to prepare a place for you. So what does that tell us? That tells us that God is thinking ahead. He is thinking about our future. He is thinking about our destiny, and we should do the same that we should not be just victims of circumstances, that we should not just be, you know, go with the sway of everything that's happening, that we should live a life of intentionality and preparation. Like Jesus, he's gone ahead of us to prepare a place for us. And this shows us what it's like to kind of live in that godly order. The creation story. 
look all the way back in Genesis, like, you know, one through three, you see that God prepared a place for humanity. He laid the foundations of the earth. He put things in place. He laid time and space, even for us to have relationship with Shabbat. And he did this to create a cycle and a rhythm and to prepare for humanity and to give us a place to prosper from, to give us a garden to glean from. He had everything prepared for us. Why? So that we could carry out our call, carry out our destiny, be in relationship, live on purpose, live intentionally with him. We didn't just arrive into like a dust bowl and he's like, here you are, go do everything. No, he prepared a place for us. Why? Because he loves us. So why do we prepare a place for him? Why do we prepare those spiritual altars? Because we love him. Um, Romans 12, 1 instructs us to offer our lives as spiritual sacrifices, that our lives are what we give to the Lord. And so we bring those in essence to an altar. Altars were built, altars were prepared, they were anointed, they were sanctified, they served a purpose. Well, your life is, you are called to serve a purpose. You are called to be a living sacrifice and to live on purpose and with intentionality and in a place of preparation. And when we live in that place, I think that that really enables us to create a cultural and spiritual environment in our home that we are prepared for the things of the Lord. And, and we do this by being, you know, living in, in sync with his calendar, living in alignment with his word. Like you can't expect God to drop something holy on you. You can't expect God to drop blessings and favor in a lifestyle that has habitual sin, where you don't live in like financial obedience, where you haven't demonstrated faithfulness and stewardship with the little things. When you do that, you are preparing, God, I want something bigger. You can trust me. I'm showing you. It's kind of like with your kids. Like when you learn that you can trust them with the little things, all of a sudden you'll be able to give them more leeway and you're able to say, okay, I can trust you. You know, um, when sometimes when we're out, um, there's an area that we stay that we have like a cul-de-sac and I'm able to let Arabella go ride her bike around the cul-de-sac. And I know that sounds crazy, but in today's world, I'm nervous to let the kids be outside on a street by themselves. But I've been able to show her, hey, I trust you. You're going to pay attention for cars. You're not going to talk to strangers. You're just going to ride. And it has given her such a gift of freedom. But that was birthed because she is a trustworthy little girl. And I know that she is going to do her best to live in obedience to her dad and I's instructions that she desires to please. She's demonstrated that. And so we're able to just give her a little bit more trust, um, you know, each way and through all, th all circumstances. So with preparation, I think obedience comes first. What does preparation look like? It looks like honoring God with your time and honoring God with your finances and honoring God with shaping your heart and your character to match that which he is asking you to carry and give birth to. So how do we honor God with our time? We do that with our devotions. We do that by showing up daily and worshiping him. We do that by showing up weekly for Shabbat or for you, maybe it's your church service. You do that by sh um, so showing up at the feasts of the Lord. That is how you honor God with your time. You put him first. You seek first the kingdom of God. You don't just fill your time with all the other things, whether it is, you know, your hobbies or things you enjoy, you allow time and space for God. And then you honor God with your finances. How do you do that? You tithe and you bring offerings at the feast. And then you, again, you honor God by shaping your heart, your character, your habits, and your patterns to carry the life that he asked for you, to carry the call and the destiny. You do that by saying, yes, I am willing to do this. You've asked me to take this step, so I am going to take the discipline steps, the obedience that it requires to carry that. I'm going to operate from a place of purity. I'm going to operate from a place of spiritual alignment. I'm going to align my life and my finances and my spiritual alignment so that I can operate and live in the blessings and the abundance of God. I am saying yes to what you have for me. I am saying yes to being prepared. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will join me again next week. And I would also love to hear from you from ways that you prepare your life and your heart for the spirit of God to move. I would love to know some of those tips because I gave you a few, but there are many ways that we can live in a prepared place, prepared and enabled to receive the very best that God has for us. Thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you again next week.